Hello everybody and a warm welcome here to our next webinar today, yeah, the 16th of um, February um, 2018, 7 o'clock p.m. usual time, but the unusual day. Today it's uh, Friday, um, one day later as usual, but that is only because of my uh, holidays and I need enough days for preparation and all the other stuff when you come back from holidays. A warm welcome in the name of JD as well. Um, and my name, yeah, my name is Stefan Friedrichowski, as always for those types of uh, webinars. Today was a to um, topic, correlation of Forex pairs. And it will even a little bit more than just a correlation of Forex pairs. <clears throat> we can talk additionally about about correlation at all um, between euro, US dollar, DAX, and um, VTE or Brent, whatever. So everything is possible, and um, that will be the topic of uh, today's webinar. You see already my email address here on the first slide. <clears throat> you can um, get in touch with me directly, just uh, use that email. And um, yeah, the the slides of today, they are already uploaded, so you can download them via the GoToWebinar control panel uh, as usual. Um, but even later, just send me an email and I make sure uh, so that you get everything what you want here. A few of us uh, might know that the last time when we have had a webinar, I said, uh, more or less goodbye for going on a holiday. And um, just uh, give me two minutes here uh, to, to say something about that. Uh, I have been in Cambodia and uh, just want to share with you one uh, video. It's um, uh, just a crossing there and I took my, my cell phone and um, recorded that video. And it tells you a little bit about the people there, uh, the people in Cambodia. So. Uh, let me try to start it, and I hope that it will stream here as well. Um, it's uh, less than a minute, and I will talk uh, during that. And th the title of that video could be Order and Chaos in Cambodia. And what is amazing is how things are working there. You see, everything just works. Nobody has really to stop nearly nobody has to put his leg on the ground and even cars do not destroy the overall picture here so it just works and talking about that a little bit more from a mathematical standpoint it's something like a near field order that means everybody is looking to the next neighbors and out of looking to the next neighbors there is no anymore any chaos people do exactly the right things and without having traffic jam or any accident it was really amazing uh, to be there and um, yeah it was a wonderful time much um, more warm than here so it's really warmer there uh, above 30 degrees all the days and at night about uh, 20 great time great time so but anyhow we go on with um, the webinar, but uh, I can recommend uh, going to Cambodia for your next uh, vacation. Wonderful people and uh, delicious food. Oh, yeah. We talk about correlation, but before doing that in detail, I have always to show that risk disclaimer, you know, uh, and I have to mention that whatever you learn here, you do later with, for your own trading activities. It's totally on your own. Um, yeah, I think that's self-explaining and has to be shown at least once per webinar. Anyhow, in detail, what are the topics of today? I will start with a little bit about the motivation why to deal with correlation and why that's important. Uh, that we have a correlation always in mind uh, when we trade. Um, Maybe when we develop trading strategies, we, which are more or less um, automated and automatically executed. But especially, it's quite important if you trade discretionary um, 
if you have asked me, ask me well, what is discretionary trading, um, it's just simple. Whenever you look to a chart and you come to a conclusion, I go long, or you or US dollar, that is a discretionary decision and that's a discretionary trading. Even if you look to fundamental data of a specific company or a specific region, <clears throat> that is discretionary as well. You do your decision not by pure <clears throat> statistic or pure math. You do it simply by your own and by your own considerations. And now it comes especially important to look to correlations because you might open several trades, but that's uh, later. When I personally talk about correlation, I want to define it a little bit more clearly and um, even not only um, to, to really define what it means and what kind of numbers uh, we get when we talk about correlation, I want to show how they are developed and what they really mean and that we will do a little bit um, by, uh, by an Excel sheet just to visualize what it really means when we talk about correlation and anti-correlation or even no correlation. We then we do some examples, some investigations <clears throat> on two double pairs, I would call them. So it's um, two times uh, forex pairs against each other, and against each other. And then we look more at detail what it does it mean if we see high correlation, low correlation, even anti-correlation. When we want to use those things, practically there's something in addition which you can find at JFD um, because there's a simple and very good um, add-on and uh, that is an add-on for MT4 and you can have it for MT5 as well uh, simply by downloading <clears throat> the JFD web page and then you get a lot of information automatically exactly in that way you might need them, the right time frames, the right history, and the right symbols uh, you are interested in. And then um, that helps a lot. I will show how to install and how to use it. And that we will do a little bit more practically um, just by some examples and uh, see how we deal with correlation and how can we use it and how can we avoid special traits if we look carefully to um, correlation itself. Okay, the motivation looking to correlation, there's especially one, one starting point. And in most cases, and I think uh, I speak for everybody here in, uh, um, in that webinar, in most cases, you open not a single trade, you open several trades or you have running trades uh, not not a single one, you have several trades simultaneously. Of course, there might be exceptions like uh, people who definitely say, I have al always at maximum one trade running and I wait until that trade is coming to an end and then I decide whether to open a new one or even not. Um, but in most cases, we talk about several trades simultaneously. And that's not really restricted uh, to the FX market. It might uh, incorporate other uh, indices or other underlyings like, like uh, indices, stocks, um, commodities, whatever. The question or one of the motivation behind to have those trades simultaneously is quite simple. We want to diversify our trading activities, which is good. Diversification is a good thing, of course. But if we trade correlated underlines, we do not diversify. If we trade in a similar way, or I just in brackets name it here, same trades. You will later see what I mean here. Um, as I, uh, or to be a little bit more specific, if I have two underlines which are highly correlated, uh, then I should not. Um, open to long trades or to short trades in ER. So uh, one long in the one and uh, the other long in the other underlying. That I do mean with same. But in case of we are totally un uh, anti correlated, so 
weavers, then it would mean the one in long, then the other one short, then it's the same trade. So that's uh, behind that. In general, we try to diversify our trades through simultaneously um, opened uh, several trades. But in case of correlation, it does simply mean we increase our risk and nothing else. So we have to deal with it correlation and finally we start with a chart but finally well, you want to do it mathematically uh, because we need some better description for that but that everybody really knows when i talk here about correlation and anti-correlation and something like that let me open two charts here um, and i go for euro us dollar um, one chart and uh, I will prepare those two charts a little bit. Just give me a few seconds here. And uh, then we look for another chart, which uh, will be the British pound US dollar, or some people call it the so-called cable. But um, anyhow, for me, it's just an underlying, just a symbol. And let's have a look to those, uh, those two underlying simultaneously so let me prepare the charts that we have them simultaneously opened here and that we see what i really mean when we talk about correlation so here's the other one and let me bring it to the same scale and then i think you will more or less immediately realize what I mean. So we have two underlines. And if you look to the chart, in this case, right now, it's an M15 chart. You see more or less two identical charts. So for sure, what we have here, and mathematically speaking, uh, we have so-called time series. So we have two series of um, simply data and the one is uh, British pound uh, US dollar and the other one in our case Euro US dollar and you see two charts and they more or less <clears throat> look identical and that's exactly what we mean with highly correlated markets visually it's obvious and you you may need um, a very close look to find some deviations and there are deviations of course for example here in the final end uh, it doesn't look really exactly the same or uh, but there are other parts yeah look for this one here from from uh, the day before yesterday uh, that uh, jumped down and uh, a few minutes later or a few one hour later uh, jump up again everything looks the same and now think about you opened a trade and let me even try to do it in a positive way meaning it might be profitable so maybe at that point in time we decided to go long in british pound us dollar and later it turned out good decision nice but let's think a few minutes later we said okay i go long in euro us dollar as well of course, in this case, it would be nice because both trades could have been ended uh, with a profit here. But what does it really mean here to open another trade long on Euro US dollar? It simply means you double your risk. You even might have doubled your initial lot size for the British pound trade and then you are done as well. So there's no real difference um, if you compare doubling the volume for the british pound us dollar trade or a few minutes later open a second trade long euro us dollar it's just the same so that is exactly not diversification it's just doubling your risk with the next trade and this is a good example of what we try to avoid when we when we really take into account um, correlation. What's obvious here, 
that those two markets, those two underlyings are highly correlated is not that obvious always. And yeah, maybe you don't want to, to use uh, thousands of charts and uh, analyze them visually. It's much better to do it mathematically because then you get all the numbers just in, 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 on a short run. So it's uh, much quicker, much, much faster. A short um, remark here on let me change time frame. I go for H1 and here for H1 as well. And you see, okay, in most cases, we still find the more or less same behavior. We have some deviations here in the middle part, but only very temporarily. And let me go for D1 here and for D1 here as well. And still you find quite positive correlations. Once again, there are deviations. Um, and we are not talking about 100% correlation, but later we will see that, especially if we look for British pound, US dollar and Euro, US dollar um, under the perspective of correlation, they are most of the time highly correlated. Or the other conclusion out of that is, if that is the case, that those two markets both having the US dollar as a last name in the Forex pair name, it simply means that the Euro British pound is more or less boring. Because this picture here, that those two markets are that highly correlated, is only possible in this special case because both Forex pairs end on uh, US dollar is only possible if the forex pair which is created by the two first names here euro british pound is more or less borrowing if that would really wiggle around quite huge then we would not get that highly correlated final picture that's another conclusion simply out of that highly correlated market of forex pairs in this case so motivation i think i uh, hope is obvious and now everything has to uh, deal with how can we manage that mathematically so that we what we find out here visually to have those two highly correlated markets how can we define that mathematically and how can we really talk in numbers and not only say high medium and something like that And the definition of correlation is uh, finally simply a, f a formula. And you can find uh, that formula um, on, on, on Wikipedia, for example, if you type correlation and then uh, space uh, wiki, Wikipedia, then you will find the exact mathematical definition. I, what I want to point out here is only that there's a number. And when we talk about time series, and we do it practically in a minute here in Excel, Correlation is just a number, and that number is simply between minus one and plus one. That's all. Or uh, other describe it as minus 100% up to plus 100%. But of course, this is identically. And what does it mean to have that number between minus one and plus one? Plus one means it's a perfect correlation. So if we have a number of one, then we know for sure we have found a perfect correlation of those two time series or later our two underlyings or markets or whatever. But we can even have the reverse. We might have a minus one as well for that correlation number. And the minus one means there's a perfect anti-correlation. What does it mean? Anti-correlation in terms of, of um, looking to our markets it means the one goes up and the other goes down so they are doing just the opposite to each other and that is a anti-correlation and of course we can have a number of close to zero or zero itself and then we have that point that we talk about two uncorrelated markets and now it's getting interesting 
think about you have first trade opened. You have a trade opened British pound US dollar as before. And now you want to open a second trade and you you are not sure which chart you should investigate next in order to identify maybe a potential good trade. Looking for another forex pair which is to the British pound US dollar because there you have already a trade open. Looking for another underlying which is more or less uncorrelated to your first one, the British pound US dollar. So if you found a correlation of close to zero <coughs> for that other underlying, then we know <coughs> if you open a trade in that underlying, then we open a trade in an uncorrelated market compared to the one we have already an open and running trade. And that is something which helps us because then we know that we are not doing what has been my visual example um, like British pound US dollar going long there <coughs> and uh, Euro US dollar going long there as well. So that is totally uncorrelated and that is interesting to identify those markets um, which have a correlation of zero to each other. So but what does it mean here? Um, <clears throat> if you get those kind of numbers and let us let's do that uh, in practice. Uh, later we come to pictures like this one here. Um, but in order to demonstrate what it really uh, means talking about a correlation, let me do in a couple of minutes here just an, an, an example on a white paper, on a white uh, Excel sheet, uh, because then you see exactly what I mean if we talk about having high numbers for correlation, low numbers, or even numbers which are uh, minus. Let me create one time series just uh, by my own here, um, just by some fantasy numbers. You may think this represents some uh, underlyings. I have no idea what uh, underlyings that should be with those numbers. But anyhow, it's only a matter of uh, having some, some numbers in order to uh, ask ourselves uh, is something uncorrelated uh, or not and, um, and just to have uh, a few numbers here. So now we have two time series, one time series, uh, let's call them A and uh, the other one maybe uh, B and that are our two underlines. Of course we can visualize like our two charts um, with uh, cable and US dollar, we can visualize those uh, two um, time series like here. And now you see already, oh, yeah, doesn't look that bad um, about correlation. And the good thing is now we can measure. And that is later exactly what that tool is doing. It's exactly doing what we can do in Excel as well. And that is something like, um, sorry, uh, like this here, that, whoops, once again, I have to do it, this and that, and now we get it. So now we have the number and the correlation of those two time series in this case, and it's good that you practice your, your eye with some, some examples by your own, just to see what it means. 0.88 is now the correlation between red and um, blue line. And so they are already quite correlated. And uh, let me try to to um, to make that correlation even um, a little bit better. Um, let me go here down uh, for this one. And you see just moving the one number uh, to zero here increases already the correlation. And um, then let's change another number here maybe that one to five correlation goes up a little bit more and now it's getting up even more and you see exactly what happens um, correlation is increasing 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 and of course we see it by our eye as well but now we have a, an impression of what does it mean 0 0.8 0 0.7 and so on and so forth so that formula coral directly gives us 
is a correlation number <clears throat> between minus one and plus one. And let me create <clears throat> an example here uh, with uh, anti-correlation as well. Uh, let me turn this one exactly to the opposite. And then it's immediately getting um, in the range of more and more being uncorrelated. You see the number goes <clears throat> more and more to the minus. Um, and um, this one doesn't change the picture that much. Um, maybe the, you see now um, it's getting more and more uncorrelated. Numbers are getting higher and higher here. Uh, so the absolute numbers. And now you see that is something which is typically anti correlated. Yeah, and then if you have numbers which are really uh, more or less random here, um, then we will finally have something which is um, um, more in the region of uh, uncorrelated. Uh, let me try to, to create something like that. Um, it's sometimes not that easy um, to, to really get something uncorrelated um, and maybe we go here for 10 and now we have something which is more or less uh, uncorrelated you see there's no common pattern um, and that means things are uncorrelated or uh, both to each other that are a little bit like a white noise but that is there something we want to have because we have, if you have one trade open in one underlying and we have can open another good trade uh, out of chart analysis or whatever we have done to derive the second trade, and we know that the second one is uncorrelated to the first one, then we have something which is really diversification. So you see how it works. It's just a visual impression here, I know, but now let's go practice with um, with some 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 real uh, number and not fantasy number like we started here. And what I want to show you here is just two examples. Uh, one will be Australian uh, dollar, Canadian dollar <clears throat> against the Euro US dollar. And we will see um, that we have everything, uncorrelated, correlated, anti-correlated, everything. And once again, I want to do it in, in now with real numbers for a long time period um, for the one we have had at the very beginning. Um, so cable and uh, euro, US dollar. And once again, we will derive the conclusion that in most cases, most time, um, the correlation is quite positive. So how can you do something like that um, by your own? Um, of course, you need the data and you know, um, talk about that uh, several times, how to get those data. Those here are D1 data uh, directly from the web page stock. A little bit strange written, st double o um, and then q.com. And then you can have those data. If you are doing analysis like this one here by your own, please make sure that the two numbers are really of the same date or same time. Um, sometimes if you download data and then you you, you uh, copy and paste them in one Excel sheet and uh, you will realize, oh, maybe for one time series, for one underlying, there's one day missing and then it comes out of order. It's not uh, any more sorted. Uh, so make sure that they are really of the same date, uh, all the data, and then um, you can do analysis like this. We can do it here, for example, visually. Once again, we have uh, 18 years data for those two underlines. And already by eye, we can recognize, hey, yeah, there are phases of good correlation. But look here at the very end, for example, we have totally anti-correlation. The one goes up, the other goes down. Um, it's very, very end, it's uh, getting similar. And what we do now here is simply exactly the same <clears throat> than in last uh, Excel spreadsheet. Um, you see, we have uh, here the formula coral. And what I did here, <clears throat> I calculate the correlation for the last 200, in this case, days, because we have data on a daily base. So for the last 200 um, data entries, um, so it's a correlation 200, which is measured uh, right now here. And to see how that looks, 
I have a chart here and you see everything happens. Totally, there are faces with good correlation. There are faces, especially at the very end, with anti-correlation, now slightly recovering. But the good thing is now we have it mathematically. And to have two trades open for Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, and Euro, US dollar, two trades open simultaneously would have only been rare examples. So when we are close to zero, I mentioned, then it's a good time to have those two trades simultaneously. If we have good reasons for those trades at all, we do it by chart analysis, whatever kind of technique you are using. But in most cases, it goes to the extremes quite fast. But we have to, to um, be in mind that uh, we are looking here for 18 years uh, price data. How's the picture? So you, you see everything is possible here, correlation, anti-correlation, and we have to be at the right point in time to do the right decisions, but we now know how to do it. But let me quickly go through the other example, um, cable against uh, Euro, US dollar here. Um, um, and that is this example. And you see most cases quite good um, correlation. And that we see already visually. But now let's look to that mathematically and you see what happens. There have been only a few points in time where that high correlated markets uh, have been interrupted. And the one is a Brexit decision and the other one I cannot re remember really well. It's around financial crisis. Um, when we hit the zero line here <clears throat> to um, the direction of anti-correlation, but in most of the 18 years, those two underlyings are highly correlated. So we can know how to derive something like that. Let me look to the um, um, to, to a question here. Um, the question is for day trading, what time frame and how many candles do you recommend? So what I typically do is, is to, uh, indeed I analyze the last 200 uh, candles. So if I look to the D1 chart, it would mean um, going back 200 candles. Maybe 100 is already okay, but in, in, in that order. The other thing is, um, the one here mentioned for day trading. So for day trading, um, you might enter your trades on H1 or you might enter your trades on H4 base. Um, so that would be for me the right time frame for day trading, not directly to the D1 chart, but it would be H1 or H4. And once again, I would look for the last 100 to 200 in order to, to identify those numbers for correlation and anti-correlation and even uncorrelated. So that would be my personal guideline uh, for that. Good. So we know how to, to, to uh, investigate and even for those who are interested in automated and um, trading strategies, having those numbers, then you can start your work on um, getting uh, trading strategies which directly use that kind of correlation, anti-correlation and even no correlation. So, <clears throat> but now we still keep in mind here that we are doing things discretionary and let's look how we can use a special tool for that. Um, it makes life much easier uh, because then we don't have uh, to look in detail uh, in Excel or any other uh, kind of way to calculate the correlation. So the good thing is that JFD is offering a so-called add-on. Um, and that add-on is not only a single one, it's even a package of uh, several add-ons I will show in a minute. And uh, you will find them on the JFD webpage. Um, since I show the webpage itself uh, later, um, you even might make a screenshot or whatever here for uh, that link or you go for the um, slides which you can download. 
those uh, and what is to do to be done um, download and start um, i will show that also that formally those add-ons are expert advisors uh, but not for automatic trading they those expert advisors just generate numbers in this case our correlation matrix and that is exactly what we want to to use uh, so using the tool means take that expert advisor throw uh, that one um, on a chart and um, then you get the correlation matrix so here are the, the several steps uh, for that uh, purpose and the first one is you visit exactly that web page and then you can download here there those uh, add-ons and just that you know there are really a couple of one trade terminal uh, market depths a mini terminal and so on and for example another one which is really smart uh, and it's called smart lines uh, the good thing there is you draw a line um, in the chart and later that line will be your stop loss for an ongoing trade, which is really cool. Uh, so it's not a trailing stop, it's, it's an, something like an expect behavior for stop loss for your ongoing trade. Uh, and therefore it's called a smart line. Then you have uh, possibilities to connect Excel with uh, the MT4 um, and uh, stealth or something uh, a little bit weird, but uh, a good thing if you want to hide <clears throat> your stop loss and take profit settings. Uh, sentiment trading and finally we go for correlation and even more finally we have the correlation matrix and that is exactly what we want to use here because then we get those numbers and those answers we are interested in uh, in order to open the next trade after we have opened the first one so simply downloading and then what are the next steps um, you have it uh, downloaded uh, the download um, is uh, simply an, a file, an executable file. Uh, so it will look like this one here. Uh, so everything you have to do is um, JFD MT4 apps, double click on that, and then it will ask you on which of your MT4 instances, even in my case, you see I have six open instances here for, of MT4, um, should um those those add-ons be installed for everyone or no only for a single one so you can decide your own and then after having done this then it will look like uh this one here uh, so you have all those add-ons under experts um so the english version would be not expert and it would be experts and then you have all those uh here after you have restarted your MT4 or you have um, actualized um, the expert advisors of uh, your running MT4. So just to restart uh, is doing its job. And what comes next? Very simple. We need a chart. We need just a, um, a chart, an open chart here. And I don't care about the chart uh, really, but <clears throat> The only thing I have to do is I go for the correlation matrix and throw that expert advisor here. And um, then after a few seconds, then it opens up here my correlation matrix. So that is an individual window. You can um, minimize, you can do whatever you want. Uh, with that uh, window, it acts like an, an individual program. And now we have all those numbers of interest. In my case, I have here, let's say my interest is in the correlation of um, seven different euro pairs. So euro pairs means in my case, euro, Japanese yen, euro, US dollar, euro, British pound, and so on and so forth. And I get that kind of information. Um, but let's start how to use it. Uh, or let's first, um, let me show you um, what else you can do and how things have to be done here. So you can change the, the um, selection of underlines. So um, here you can add new symbols to your correlation matrix. Like for example, uh, let me even uh, add something uh, totally different like the ducks 
And in order to do that, please make sure that one thing you have done before. A symbol you want to add in your personal correlation matrix has to be present in the market watch as well. So only those which are visible in the market watch can be added to the correlation matrix. Only those. And then you can um, you can add a new symbol here to the correlation matrix and then we have even the ducks within those forex pairs. And now the question is, let's assume you have an open trade in Euro, uh, New Zealand, Dollar. Maybe a long trade, whatever. And now, before just crossing all the different charts, we want to answer the question, what pair should be a could be a good candidate candidate to be the next trading opportunity, which is more or less uncorrelated to our first trade. Answer on H1 base, Euro, Swiss form. That be, would be the first one. <laughs> and the second one in this case here, oh, no, would be Euro, Australian dollar. Um, and then comes the ducks um, in, in, in that order. Because that still doesn't mean that I say, okay, we have to open the next trade in Euro Swiss form. No, that would be the next chart I should investigate and look whether I can identify a good trading opportunity in whatever direction, long or short. The good thing is we know that compared to our already running trade, Euro, New Zealand dollar, this potential trade on Euro, Swiss form would be uncorrelated. And that means that we are really increasing, uh, we, we are um, diversifying our trading account or trading portfolio. And that's exactly what we've tried to achieve. You see other examples which should be avoided, <laughs> like uh, this one here, nearly black. To have a trade in Euro Canadian dollar and simultaneously a trade in Euro US dollar should be avoided because those two are totally uncorrelated. Uh, totally correlated, sorry. <laughs> that was really the wrong word here. So, and the good thing is we have everything just in a second just by having a look here to, um, to those numbers. Of course, if you look to a specific correlation, it should have to do with time frame you are interested in. So you want to if you want to trade on M5 base, uh, then you don't care about the correlation on a D1 base. Um, so you should be on, a, on the same time frame here. But of course, we can change the time frame, and if we are, if we would be interested in D1, okay, here are the numbers. So um, it's uh, quite easy to do that. It's quite easy to add your own personal um, symbols, or do here only those symbols which you are really interested in. Um, you don't have to put everything here. Uh, maybe Euro. Um, Czech, Czech, uh, or they call it Czech France, um, is maybe not your favorite currency pair, or Euro Singapore dollars. Um, then don't um, look to those. Just look to those you are really interested in, and then you can derive your conclusions. Let me highlight here something else: how you can use the correlation matrix additionally. So first thing has been to identify something which is more or less uncorrelated to an already ongoing trade. The other thing here is, especially if you look for um, symbols or underlines, like in my case here, and you see that I have everything with Euro first name and other names as a second name. Now it's getting interesting to 
look for the one with the highest minus y. Let's first look which number has the highest minus. Oh, and on D1, it doesn't look that good. Let me change uh, time frame to uh, H1. Um, even here I have more luck, but oh, we have nearly nothing uncorrelated. Um, I think the highest or lowest minus number, oh yeah, is here. Minus 52. And um, why is it interesting? What does it mean? We have Euro New Zealand dollar and Euro US dollar, which are highly uncorrelated. Highly, at least the highest number, uh, uh, mathematically correct, it would be the lowest number, but um, you know what I mean. We have the, high, uh, the, 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 the most negative number here. Well, why is that interesting? Euro New Zealand dollar and Euro US dollar are a little bit anti-correlated or a little bit more anti-correlated. And now we get a chance. That means that we can expect, at least for the history, that New Zealand dollar, US dollar has had high movements, so big movements. That's a very trendy underlying and that we can derive just by looking to that number, minus 52. Because those two forex pairs, which have the same first name, in this case Euro, are highly anti-correlated. And that means we have good trendy behavior exactly in the one which the two one which are remaining and that is New Zealand dollar US dollar let me check so I need symbols a new symbol here because it hasn't been on the chart New Zealand dollar US dollar and now we go for a chart here and we go for the same time frame let me look to the time frame it has been H1. Um, where we are. There. And you see, yo, there have been really huge movements with in those in that underlying New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Huge movements are a little bit more easy to trade, at least if they are not just only biggling around like uh, this one here. But for a couple of hours, we have really trendy behavior. And that you find an indication for that just by looking to the correlation matrix. So the good thing is you don't have to analyze 30 different charts. Uh, the only thing you have to analyze is that correlation matrix. And then you know already what you can do. And now we have already two opportunities. One, to identify the next trade, which would really diversify my portfolio. And the second chance is to look for highly anti-correlated Forex pairs in case we are really looking to something like Euro XXX, in my, uh, what I have done here. Only then um, that kind of consideration is 100% um, correct. Um, if everything is a little bit mixed with first name and last name, uh, then it's getting a little bit more complicated because sometimes you need some high numbers. But anyhow, you know what I mean and you know how to deal with that. Just by that correlation matrix, which helps you for your trading activities. And even if you consider uh, correlations between gold, ducks and uh, oil, no problem. Any underlying can be incorporated into that correlation matrix here. So that's really a very nice tool and um, yeah, it's free. So maybe it can only be used on JFD accounts. I'm not sure. I have not uh, figured out and not tried, but uh, I assume at least that uh, there's a restriction, but um, even opening a demo account will do the job that you, you get the tool up and running and then you can use that kind of information. The two, one, I repeat myself, identifying the next trade, which would be uncorrelated, meaning diversification, 
or even to identify trendy behaviors for uh, forex pairs. That's already good stuff, but there's even one step more. And um, that I just briefly want to share with you, um, because even for me, it's um, running now since two days, so it's really fresh, um, because I'm on the way to, to use correlation for automatic uh, strategies as well. Let me describe a little bit what I'm doing here. Um, uh, so that we uh, uh, have a clear picture on that. What I do here is exactly what I did with my correlation matrix. If you look to what kind of symbols I'm using here, they are exactly the same seven symbols, euro always in first name, and then um, um, another one as a second name. But not in this case, I'm not creating those decisions, decisions like um, in my example with New Zealand dollar, US dollar. I just really trade only those seven symbols, but with, with the same question behind. And the same question behind means I want to trade those which are uncorrelated to each other in order to have diversified trading activity. So the maximum open trades is here three. So um, out of the seven, maximum three are traded. And right now we have trades running in Euro Australian dollar, Euro Japanese yen, and Euro New Zealand dollar. And only if one of those three trades is closed, I will ask again the question, which one should I add, which is mostly uncorrelated to the already two running ones. And then I open a trade for the third one once again. So it's always looking for the opportunities of opening trades in uncorrelated markets. So that's the basic idea behind. Still, you have to answer the question long or short. But what I will know before you really answering that question long or short is, I trade the next one, which is uncorrelated to the previous. And that's uh, what I want to, to achieve here. So it's really fresh. And you see um, account results are not already telling you anything. Uh, so <clears throat> a few trades are, are done. Um, uh, let me report on that uh, at a later stage uh, again. And of course, I have done investigations um, how and those trades have to be opened, um, and that's implemented in those ex expert advisors, uh, thanks to the help of Peter Müller, who is always um, coding those EAs, and he has done that job during my holidays. That's a little bit unfair, but sometimes it happens like that. And now we are in the test phase for, for this one. Okay, let me summarize what we have learned and done here today. So we, we know now correlation is really a valuable tool in order to identify, identify suitable markets. And what I mean here is that we, if we have a lot of trades simultaneously, those trades should be at least a little bit be uncorrelated. Otherwise, it's just an increase of risk. And we want to diversify our portfolio, our trading account, and therefore we have to consider correlation as one methodology in order to, to get it quantitative, um, that we don't trade uh, in highly correlated markets and we simply increase our risk. The other thing is that we I have introduced here a little bit about uh, that uh, JFD add-on package and we just used uh, one add-on out of that and that is uh, correlation matrix. It's easy to use. It's easy to, to, to get it up and running. Um, you can change settings, you can change underlying timeframes and so on. And the good thing is it's just free. That tool helps you to, uh, to get those answers on the first two questions and uh, help you to um, really diversify uh, your trading activities. And uh, I think at least up to now, everybody knows how those numbers of correlation between minus one and plus one have to be interpreted and um, yeah, how to do it. 
Okay, that's already for now. And um, in two weeks, uh, it's less than two weeks, it's only one and a half week, uh, we do the next webinar, then it goes around uh, candlestick formations. And the funny thing is, we use, once again, correlation in order to identify um, candlestick formations. You will see how that works. It's um, not that complicated, but <laughs> indeed we use correlation um, for candlestick formation and the identification of candlestick formations. But the even more interesting question is what kind of candlestick formations um, are really tradable and profitable. You can read um, hundreds of textbooks about candlestick formations and how to trade them. But the really valid and important question is, does it work? And in which case? And then how? And that will be answered in the next webinar uh, about candlestick formations. You find on the JFD webpage as always. Okay, that's for now. Thank you very much for your interest here. And uh, see you again, hopefully, in um, nearly two weeks. And uh, yeah, have a good evening. Bye-bye.